WoW PvP has felt like McDonald's so far this season, but instead of the ice cream machine being broke, it's been class tuning and MMR that needs a bit of fixing. Luckily, in his final days at Blizzard, Holinka put balanced druids in the deep fryer, and today we're going to be giving you three suggestions on what to main for melee, ranged, and healer in the coming weeks, including a bonus sleeper pick for every role. And be sure to subscribe because later this week, we will be releasing a full tier list update to reflect Tuesday's changes. Before we start, be sure to check out our brand new site exclusive course on how to instantly gain rating. This playlist is over one hour long and teaches you vital game knowledge for climbing, including the the most important things you need to pay attention to against every class. If you want more bite-sized information, we even have additional courses teaching you counters to other meta specs. Everything at sealcap.com is backed by a rating gain guarantee. Yes, we literally promise that you will go up in rating while using our guides, and if you don't, then you shouldn't pay. Visit the link below to get started, but for now, let's get back to the video. As a refresher, last time we recommended Subtlety Rogue, Fury Warrior, and Enhancement Shaman for melee. This time, we'll be voting two members off the island. The only melee we are keeping in the top three is Sub Rogue. Blizzard swooped in this week with some nerfs that target some of the more problematic parts of Sub Rogue Burst, including Secret Technique, which was an ability that turned every rogue player into a magician by making your health bar disappear. We still think rogues will be in a good spot for the remainder of Season 2. With Secret Tech hitting for up to 300k damage, it's not like an 8% nerf will be game-changing. At their core, Sub Rogue is all about control, and we've already seen their resilience in being able to overcome game-wide CC reduction nerfs. Will Tuesday's hotfixes make rogues worse overall? Of course, but we don't think they will be enough to suddenly eviscerate their performance. With Fury Warrior and Enhancement Shaman voted off as the best melee to main, Demon Hunters will now be taking the second slot. Again, with the meta being so dominated by casters in 3v3, DH is a standout for melee DPS due to having various anti-spell damage abilities, which according to this tooltip is caused by their tattoos. For lore reasons, of course. Above all else, Demon Hunter is just a Swiss army knife in terms of comp selection, all while having access to some of the best comps in the game, playing with a Balanced Druid or Destruction Warlock. In solo shuffle, Demon Hunter continues to perform well. While it might not be as dominant as Sub Rogue at the highest end of the ladder, DH is a solid pick for anyone looking to grind out wins in the caster meta. One unique feature of Demon Hunter is Chaotic Imprint, which causes Throw Glaive to apply a damage modifier to a random school of magic on the target. With good RNG, Demon Hunters can buff their partner's damage while also blasting with an eye beam you forgot to save kick for. Finally, even though 2v2 isn't the best bracket for DH, they're still floating in the respectable A tier for Season 2. At lower ratings, Demon Hunters play Arena like they just watched every Rambo movie back to back, and now think it is their duty to chase every player into the ends of the earth with no fear or remorse. They are especially good against Warlocks, especially since they can eat the soul of enemy demons for an additional 20% damage bonus, which is only in the game for lore reasons once again. The third melee on our list is Arms Warrior. This might sound like a bit of a gamble, but hear us out. Blizzard must have seen Joe Fernandez get kited by another Resto Druid on stream, and in a panic, they buffed all Arms Warrior damage by 4%, while giving some additional buffs to Deep Wounds, Rend, and that random Execute talent that was accidentally killing people in Season 1. And with nerfs to some of the overperforming Wizards, Arms might have a better time in Solo Shuffle in 3v3. Taken together, we think Arms could potentially come back as the best Warrior spec for the remainder of Season 2. Finally, we have Retribution Paladin as our sleeper suggestion for melee DPS. While definitely worse than their Season 1 self, Ret Pallies are actually doing quite well in Season 2 for a reason you might not expect. Here is the Season 2 ecosystem. At the bottom of the food chain, we have Death Knights. DKs feed the mid-tiers, who then go ahead and feed more rating to sub-rogues and the high-tier wizards, who battle for dominance at the top of the food chain. And while this is happening, Ret Paladins are also getting fed by DKs, while farming the sub-rogues, while also getting farmed by the wizards. And this is what we call balance. Notice how there are no warriors. Seriously though, with the popularity of sub-rogue, Ret Paladins have some niche value in both 3v3 and solo shuffle, where their toolkit is perfectly designed to avoid the deadly one-shots that we're all familiar with. And now, with more Ret Paladins converting to Crusade, the spec has some new one-shot potential of its own, even being able to kill through major defensive cooldowns with high stacks. So just as a recap, Sub Rogue, Havoc Demon Hunter, and Arms Warrior are all three great specs to main for melee DPS right now in Season 2. And if you were one of the Ret Paladin re-rollers in 1007, don't worry because Ret is also looking strong in this meta. Moving on to ranged DPS, last time we had two recommendations, Destro Warlock and Balanced Druid. This hasn't changed despite nerfs to both of these specs. 
As a refresher on current events, this entire season was like going back to the Shadowlands, but instead of a creepy bald guy keeping us hostage, it was people who enjoy cosplaying as chickens and mages with self-esteem issues. Destro was hit by some pretty reasonable nerfs on Tuesday, including damage reductions on Conflag and Shadow Burn, which are two of its major damage sources. On top of this, Inquisitor's Gaze and Amplify Curse got a set of nerfs, affecting the Warlock class as a whole. In case you don't know how Inquisitor's Gaze works, don't worry, the Warlocks don't know either. It is this neat RNG proc that shoots out of the Warlock's hands and can randomly top the damage meters. Now, you might be wondering, how could we possibly be recommending Destro after multiple nerfs? The margin between Destro Warlock, Balanced Druid, and the rest of the ranged DPS cast was significant enough that we still expect Destro to be one of the best ranged DPS specs in the game. While Destro might not have been as popular as last season's Ret Paladin, it was arguably just as good, which is why it's come to dominate almost every bracket this season. Will it be the best caster? No. But will Destro still be highly competitive? We think yes. The same story is true for our laser chicken friends. This week's class tuning included nerfs to astral power generation, star surge burst, and a tiny slap on the wrist to Alkin Adept, which is that talent that makes kicking Cyclone require an Adderall prescription. Overall, these nerfs will definitely hurt Boomkins, but we still forecast that Balanced Druids will be one of the best ranged DPS in the game. Just like Sub Rogue, Balance can carry the load in Arena with control alone, and we don't expect a 10% nerf to Alkin Frenzy will be enough to suddenly stop Cyclone from being cast. After all, haste values will continue to go up as the season wears on, and thanks to Precognition, Balanced Druids will still have their god tier trap card to punish you for missing your wimpy little kick. Our third recommendation for ranged DPS is Shadow Priest. The spec saw a major rework in 10.1, but left a few people disappointed, at least in comparison to the rework our fellow Ret Paladins got in Season 1. Part of the rework included cooldown reduction to Void Torrent, which is now 45 seconds and can be lowered to 30 with an additional talent. This has given the spec an additional way to microburst every stun DR, which might help explain why Shadow Priest Rogue is such a deadly combo right now. In any case, Shadow Priest is in a good state right now with numerous comp options and is one of the few DPS that can succeed in double DPS 2v2. On the horizon, we will be seeing a major overhaul to all hybrid specs, including increasing mana bars dramatically to suit more of a traditional hybrid role. This, without a doubt, will be a huge buff to Shadow Priest, as they are often limited on how much off-healing they are able to contribute in Arena, since Power Word Shield eats your mana bar quicker than Osmongold and a bag of Wendy's. So if you want to invest now in a spec that will potentially see huge returns in the next major patch, then Shadow Priest might be your calling. With our three heavy hitters out of the way, our sleeper recommendation for ranged DPS is actually BM Hunter. This fourth slot was up for grabs, honestly, with Fire Mage and Ellie Shaman also looking quite strong going into the midseason. Beast Mastery might have been a bit dormant so far this season, but with a 5% buff, we could see a small resurgence. While 5% might not seem like much, remember that BM Hunter thrives on high sustained damage, and small changes like this are sometimes enough to snowball their pressure into an unhealable nightmare. As a quick recap, if you're looking to invest in a new main right now, Destro Warlock, Balanced Druid, and now Shadow Priest will be your best bets, with BM Hunter being an appealing option, especially for newer players. Moving on to healers, we had previously recommended Mistweaver Monk and Disc Priest, which were both bonked on the head after weeks of making every other healer feel insecure. For weeks, Mistweaver was arguably the better healer overall, at least in 3v3 and solo shuffle. One huge reason for this is its tier set, with the Mistweaver 2 piece acting like an infinite resource glitch in longer games. Blizzard decided enough was enough, handing out nerfs to Mistweaver mana and healing output, which should now put the spec more in line with other healers, especially in the late game. For now, we will continue to recommend Mistweaver Monk as a good healer to main. Even though they might not be the obvious standouts, Monks are still looking strong for every bracket. The same is true for Disc Priest, who we are also keeping as a recommended healer for Season 2. This week's class tuning shifted around Disc Priest output, nerfing Power Word Shield, but buffing Atonement based healing. A decision which is likely a nerf overall, but probably not a significant one. Right now, Disc Priest continues to be propped up by its seemingly infinite amount of defensive cooldowns, which makes them extremely difficult in shorter burstier games, where forcing one cooldown means nothing since you just have five more you need to deal with. Picking any healer right now might be a bit of a gamble, but Resto Shaman is shaping up to be quite the competitor in Solo Shuffle and 3v3. Once again, with the ecosystem of DPS currently favoring casters, Shamans are naturally built for the meta. With tons of anti-spell tech, Shamans can be a bane for many wizards. This week's changes included some buffs to a healing rain PvP talent as sort of an indiscreet nudge to force Shamans to actually use their tier set. It's unclear whether or not Shamans will even use Rain Dance, since it means dropping other valuable options and changing a few talents in the main build. In any case, we think Shaman might be a solid choice in the coming weeks, especially with all of its anti-caster technology. 
Finally, as a sleeper pick for healers, it might be time to invest in Resto Druid. We know healing has felt a bit awkward after the rework last season, but maybe it's time Resto Druid shapeshift their playstyle. Seriously, now that Cyclone is the most Giga Chad ability in the game, it's probably time Resto Druid start using it more often. Anyway, Resto might actually be a good investment in the coming weeks, since players have been begging for buffs for months. For the past few weeks, Mistweaver Monks were arguably the biggest gatekeeper for Resto Druid in Solo Shuffle due to their seemingly infinite mana bar. Now, with nerfs to Monk mana, Resto Druids might be able to flourish in Solo Shuffle once again. And even if they aren't the best in 3v3 or Solo Shuffle, you can always count on playing Crop Simulator in the 2v2 bracket where you can farm free rating from people with jobs. Here we have our final recap of healers worth investing in for Season 2. We really don't think you should sleep too hard on Resto Druid. They could wind up better than expected. Before we wrap up, if you want to gain rating fast this season, no matter your spec, we have some amazing new courses which can only be found at skillcap.com. This includes brand new master and minutes guides for every role, which condense years of game knowledge into bite-sized pieces. We even have a new buff knowledge course, which teaches you what to pay attention to against every class. We're also updating class courses every week, including a redesign to all of our damage and healing guides in 10.1 with a brand new learning experience, which includes new micro commentaries and master of minutes guides where you can learn all the tricks on how to min max. So if you want to stay ahead of the meta and get the rating you've always wanted, then take advantage of our rank up game guarantee and learn more about skill cap by visiting the links below. Anyway, that wraps it up for this one. Let us know what you are playing these days in Dragonflight Season 2. As always, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.